Hello everyone. Uh, on today's video, I'm going to show you um, how to run a nitrogen fixing HS QC. So, something um, that I said here, see that I picked up my whole sequence. So one way you can do that, you can either come from another folder that you had read, ran an experiment, or you can come here and you can come select experiment and you go to select. I like to, to, to search like this. So I put like some features that I want to find on the name. So we just QC and F3. So I do that and I find here like the pull sequence that I like. I could, I could have chosen one, another one, but I, I prefer this guy, this pull sequence. Then I just put like, okay, if I want. So I have my pull sequence loaded here. So important features about this is the constant four. So constant four is the J coupling between the, in this case, nitrogen 15 and hydrogen. Okay, so it's 1994. Uh, for this guy, actually, I ran some tests. So you can actually see here that I ran, the first one was with the constant was 90 and the second one here, constant 94. So I tested and I realized that, for example, for most of my peaks, 94 uh, is a little bit, seems to be a little bit uh, better. So 94 is the pink one. So for uh, it's a little bit better than 90. So you can actually test and see which one works better for you. So uh, you can test like more numbers. Um, so for, for example, if you have like um, a bigger protein, um, so for example, this, uh, constant, okay, one over four uh, times this this number is gonna dictate like the duration of your uh, inept, uh, which which means that it's the duration of um, your J coupling evolution. So, <clears throat> but we have to remember that during this period we also have transverse relaxation. So for small proteins, um, you can use for example ninety. Um, it's fine, 94, but sometimes for bigger proteins, you can to you have to optimize this for like bigger numbers, even though like the transfer is less efficient, um, because then you're gonna you're getting far from the ideal J coupling, but you're kind of being compensated by the fact that you're making the delay smaller, so you have less transverse relaxation. So another thing is like your D1, so one 1.5 1 is fine. Uh, for this, like this, use a 3919 um, scheme for um, water suppression. Uh, it doesn't say here, but um, I know from, for example, if we uh, put this, so we see that the, the, the pulse like 3919. Um, one thing that I also want to share is what happens um, if I remove like the pi pulse in the middle of the evolution of the indirect dimension. So what is the function of this pi pulse? And uh, why when I have like, let's say, let's copy this and play a little bit with this pulse sequence. For example, I copy this experiment six. I have some things running already. So I just to remember, I already adjusted ATMM, I locked, my system, I did option, I calibrate the pulse, everything, it's uh, it's done. So uh, you see here, for example, that you have like some if statements on the pulse sequence. So this is like, it means like, if you have like a label sample, carbon and nitrogen label sample, you also need the P14, uh, what I mean is like, you also need a pipe pulse on the carbon channel. So and how do I do that? I just have to introduce this so I can copy and introduce this over here. You remember, so before putting here, just let me show you again. So this is my pi pulse, the, my pulse sequence now. So what happened when I put this here? Just I remove the copy, something that I'm supposed to. So yeah, something changed, right? So what happened? Let's see what happened. Okay, so I have now an, another 
pulse or another pi pulse. And this pi pulse is in the carbon channel. So this kind of gives us an idea what is what is the function of this pi pulse on hydrogen, for example, right? So I um, like this sample of mine doesn't have, it's not carbon labeled, so I can just remove this and then you're gonna see that it's gone. So the spike pulse in the middle of the indirect dimension evolution. Um, uh, so for example, why do I need this when I have a carbon labeled protein like carbon nitrogen label? Because when I'm evolving in the chemical shift in nitrogen, I have to decouple on the evolution of J coupling with carbon, right? Uh, but nitrogen is always like 99% is like nitrogen, right? So I have to decouple hydrogen. So that's the function of my pi poles in the middle of my uh, indirect dimension, okay? So, and also like what is the function of this decoupling here at the end? So um, it's actually I'm decoupling nitrogen from hydrogen in the direct dimension, right? So I have like a, on experiment three, I have been like running for a while now and I can actually see that my peaks are all, you see like they are doublets, not singlets anymore. Like I'm seeing not one correlation actually, I'm just seeing two correlations. Um, so after I run the, 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 normal HSQC or the regular HSQC, this is my experiment too. Uh, we can actually superimpose them. I can show you on the next video and you're gonna see like that, uh, where it's gonna show up that correlation. So I believe you, you already know that the the nor regular HSQC, the correlation is gonna show up here because on this pulse sequence here, I'm gonna show you. So I comment, okay, here, I comment the pi poles on nitrogen here in the middle of my uh, evolution of the indirect dimension. So I, I'm letting the J coupling between nitrogen and, and hydrogen evolve during the evolution of my indirect dimension. So which means that I, uh, I, um, I will see the splitting due to nitrogen and hydrogen coupling. So uh, if I put it back, right, go back to the regular one, I will collapse these two correlation into one and they're gonna collapse here in the middle. You see like if I measure, I can pick it like here. Uh, so the reason why we pick like with like the constant force 94 or 90, like something like this. So you see, it's like 88. You can see like uh, on the left side, I uh, have like 88 Hertz. And if we go here and measure here, 90.5 Hertz, okay. So these are the splitting to the hydrogen and nitrogen 15, 15 coupling. So you see it's all over my spectrum. So uh, this kind of, uh, uh, oh, I also like uh, added, I also added one of the post sequence to remove both like to, the, so I'm not decoupling neither in F1, not in F2. So you're gonna see the four peaks, okay? That comes from the, the four transitions. So this kind of experiments, for example, this kind of experiment like this is useful when you're measuring RDCs, for example, right? So you wanna measure um, the J coupling uh, in the absence of the residual bipolar coupling, which means that you have like an isotropic example or you want to move, measure like J plus D, what is like when you have like an aligned sample. So, and you subtract them and get the RDC. So this is one application that you could use uh, for this kind of experiment. But you can also, for example, let's say that you have like a 24, 26, 27 kilodalton protein. We're not sure if running a trolls is better or not. You can run like the fully coupled experiment and see how your transitions look like, if they say have the same kind of relaxation or not. So yeah, so this is what I uh, wanna to show you guys today. And I hope you guys enjoy this video and um, that's it.
Thank you for watching and see you next time.